Okay, welcome back, economists. Uh, we are here to think about our next form of government intervention, uh, and that is the idea of an indirect tax. So maybe before we go any further, we probably need to make the distinction between a direct tax and an indirect tax, okay? So a direct tax um, is when uh, the taxpayer pays their money uh, in taxes straight to the government, okay? So that's probably gonna look like um, income taxes, probably is the, the biggest direct tax, but also maybe property taxes, right? Uh, taxes on wealth, assets, and income, right? Those are all direct taxes. Now, what's important to note here is that direct taxes decrease demand. They, they don't decrease supply. But here we're talking about an indirect tax. So an indirect tax is, um, you know, sort of uh, when the, 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 the taxpayer pays their money eventually to the government, um, but it, we, it doesn't go straight to them. Okay, so in this case, indirect taxes are almost always going to be a sales tax. Okay, so if you've ever heard the expression a sales tax, or if you've ever uh, seen the abbreviation GST, that stands for Goods and Services Tax, all of those are taxes on consumption. So what is being taxed is uh, the actual buying of the product. That is what is being taxed. So usually indirect taxes are put on things that um, the government doesn't want you to buy. Um, usually things that have a negative impact on society. Cigarettes and alcohol uh, are, are some of the products where the, the rate of the indirect tax is maybe higher than other products. Okay, so there's two types of indirect taxes. There is a specific tax, as in that is a set amount. So if you're gonna go buy a carton of cigarettes, you'll pay $2 per pack, okay? Um, so that is a specific tax. It's a set amount, um, regardless of how many ta uh, of how many uh, packages of cigarettes that you buy, you will pay that amount um, per um, per unit bought. Okay. But then there's also an ad valorem tax. We'll get to this in another video. But an ad valorem tax is a percentage based thing. Um, so if you buy one gallon of alcohol, you will pay, the more alcohol quantity that you buy, um, you'll pay a higher rate. So maybe if you um, buy a pint of alcohol, you'll pay 10%, but if you buy a gallon, you'll pay 25%, right? So the, the greater the quantity, the greater the percentage. That is an ad valorem tax. We'll get to the, the differences between those two things um, in a separate video. At least for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about the idea of a specific tax, and that's how we're going to draw it. Okay, so that's what an indirect tax is. Now, direct taxes decrease demand, but a little bit counterintuitive here is indirect taxes are actually going to decrease supply. Okay, so you might think that a consumption tax is going to decrease demand. It will decrease the quantity demanded, but it won't shift the demand curve. Okay, that's an important distinction uh, to make sort of straight away. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, why is it that a consumption tax will decrease supply? Um, and the explanation there is pretty simple. Um, indirect taxes, one way or another, are going to hurt the revenue of the producer or the one selling the product. Okay, um, and when businesses have less revenue, they then have less money to spend on uh, their factors of production. Right? So that is one reason why supply decreases on indirect tax. Another one is that indirect taxes increase the costs of production um, for businesses. They then have to go back and adjust the prices for all of their products, and they usually have to have their, their workers do that. So it decreases revenue um, and it increases costs. So for that reason, an indirect tax decreases supply. Okay, so let's draw that here. And as we know, 
Um, we're going to get a new equilibrium out of this. A new price equilibrium, the price will go up and the quantity demanded will decrease. Now, um, if you're a standard level student, this is enough, okay? Uh, this is enough to, to show the impact of an indirect tax, but what we are really after in HL is thinking about how does an indirect tax impact uh, different stakeholders in this market, okay? So, um, obviously the two big stakeholders in any market are going to be the consumers and the, and the producers. So, in this case, we need to think about who's going to pay what proportion of the tax. Okay, so you might notice here that I've drawn the demand curve to be unit elastic, as in we have a proportional price change to a quantity change. Right? We'll get to that more at the end of this video, um, but just make a note of that for a second. So you might think, well, the the consumer burden, which we're about to show in red here, how do consume how are consumers impacted? by an indirect tax. Well, they lose part of their income. They have to now pay a higher price uh, for the same product, right? So part of this tax is going to be paid by the consumers, okay? So that's the consumer burden. So um, at our new quantity equilibrium, which is QE2, this little revenue box that we've made here, okay? The distance between the price, PE1 and PE2, at the point of our new quantity equilibrium, we're going to shade that in, and we're going to label that as the consumer burden. So all of this is going to be shaded in in red. It's going to be sort of this rectangular shape thing here. Okay, so that whole revenue box there, that amount of the tax is going to be paid um, by the consumer, okay? So as we mentioned sort of at the start here, indirect taxes also mean that the producer loses out on revenue. The reason for that is they have decreased sales. They sell fewer products um, and as a result, they lose out on some revenue. So a that part of the tax, right, is, is going to be here. So we're going to find our new quantity equilibrium, which is here. We're going to connect that up to the initial supply curve. And we're going to call that, we'll just call it T for indirect, you know, for tax, right? So this new um, revenue box that we have made, that is the lost uh, revenue for the producer who's selling this product, right? They're going to lose out on revenue. They're going to have higher costs. So that portion, um, this whole part here, this is the percentage of the tax that's going to be paid by the producer. So all of the tax revenue that the government collects from the imposition of this indirect tax is going to be a a combination of the red box, which is paid by the consumer, and the blue box, which is paid by the producer. Okay, so this is the tax revenue for the government. Okay, um, so when you add those two things up, that's how much money the government is collecting off of taxing this product, whatever it may be. Okay, so there's a third thing to consider here, and that's we're introducing the idea of a deadweight loss. Deadweight loss basically means when resources sort of get destroyed. If you've ever heard the phrase that the power to tax is the power to destroy, that has a very real meaning. Um, and specifically by that, um, taxes reduce economic activity. They decrease production, and they can also decrease consumption if we're talking about a direct tax. Okay, So this triangle here, we're going to color this in, in black. That is the idea of dead weight loss. So in other words, um, let's say the government decided to put a, an indirect tax on whiteboard markers. Producers of whiteboard markers would produce less whiteboard markers because um, they would have increased costs. So in other words, before, their before this tax, there used to be 
more whiteboard markers in existence, but because of the tax, less are produced and resources are literally destroyed because whiteboard marker companies, right, they will purchase less raw materials, which is the plastic and the ink, they will hire fewer workers, uh, they will purchase less capital. So that's less economic activity because of the tax, literally destroyed by the tax. That's the idea of dead weight loss. Okay, so um, who's, who's impacted by this, right? The producers have to decrease their production. They probably have to cut costs. Um, and part of their revenue now goes to the government, right? Consumers are hurt because they have to pay higher prices, which means they have less disposable income to spend on other uh, goods and services. Um, and the government is a third stakeholder here. They gain some revenue. Now, what I want you to do next, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk you through this, you're gonna do this on your own, is I want you to draw this diagram. We're gonna do it four times, okay? So first, you're gonna draw this diagram, only you're going to adjust the PED here to be inelastic. So you're gonna take our unit elastic demand curve and make it very inelastic, okay? Um, and then you're gonna draw the graph a second time and you're gonna give it a very elastic, very flat slope of the demand curve, okay? The third diagram you're gonna draw here is drawing supply as very elastic, okay? Um, and then drawing supply as very inelastic. And I want you to make note of how does the proportion of the consumer and producer burden of the tax change, okay? Um, and maybe how, much, how does the government revenue or the size of the deadweight loss change, right? So the idea of tax incidence is not exactly on the new curriculum, but there is a bullet point under 2.7 that says you need to be able to think about how does an indirect tax impact the different groups of stakeholders in a market, and you can use tax incidence to do that. Okay, so now let's uh, take this uh, diagram and draw it four times, adjust PED to be elastic and inelastic, and then PES to be elastic and inelastic, and see how that changes uh, the results in the market. Okay, thanks guys.